Oh, there's one. Oh, that's probably a big old striper. <laughs> in fact, I know it is. That's a giant striper. It's got to be. <laughs> Folks, I saw something move out there. <laughs> he doesn't want to let go. Oh, big old striper. <laughs> that's not even a real giant, but man, they got shoulders. Oh, my goodness. Oh. Come on, son. You know that was fun. <laughs> I saw him out here jumping. I was going across the, the cove here and decided, oh, man, that looks like a good fish. All right, bud, you're done. Ah, gotcha. Look at that. <laughs> Folks, and this is what is possible to catch at Lake, beautiful Lake Pleasant. Look at that, striper. <laughs> Honest to goodness, I'm looking for largemouth, but, but, but believe it or not, what I'm throwing today here at Lake Pleasant, we just got started, is a little swim bait, and it never fails. With a little swim bait, you can definitely get on some of them stripers as well with it. And uh, we'll probably work with a couple of different ones today, but I'll tell you, what happens is this time of year, we're here in late spring. There's gonna be, not all the fish do the same thing at the same time. A lot of times what ends up happening is, is you have some fish that are spawning, probably main lake by now. Uh, you've got fish that are chasing shad now, which this works out great, or watching fry around the bushes. And so we've come back into this cut and started fishing down the bank. What I decided to do was jump across, I'm gonna work my way back up the bank, try to find where these fish are at. But in the meantime, throwing this little swim bait, I can cover a lot of water. Now, what makes a swim bait a lot of fun it's a little three inch swim bait. I can take it out there, throw it out there and reel it, keep my rod tip down and make that little V. If you see the little V that's coming across the water there, that looks like that lone shad that actually got away from the pack. And what ends up happening a lot of times is bass will key in on that and they'll see that one lone shad running around there and they'll end up pouncing on your bait. Now, the cool thing about it is, if you don't mind just catching fish and having a good day, you're gonna catch some of them striper because there's striper in Lake Pleasant and you can watch them boil, get out there and have a great time with this bait. Throw it right there in the boil like we just did and catch the fish. I'll keep going down the bank. You never know if those could be bass chasing shad out there. So every once in a while, I'll throw out there when I see something boil and see what it is. Now we know what it is, it's shad. But I can cover a lot of water with this, put my trolling motor on a little bit high and move down the bank to find fish. It's a great search bait in this clear water. Now, these things are really designed to work great in this clear water. And uh, you'll have a lot of fun with it. But like I said, sometimes these fish are still bedding. You know, that not all fish do the same thing at the same time. Some are around the trees watching their fry. There's some that are just hunting shad. They're feeding up now. They're, you know, we're, we're in a, once your, once your water or your air temps start hitting around 100 degrees, these fish will get a little bit more active. The warmer the water, the more they have to feed. So we'll see if we can catch a few fish here and uh, just kind of go around, find out if they're on the flats, on the, on the steeper stuff, in the brush. We're gonna just kind of work it around. Cover some water, cover some water. Oh man, I missed a good one right there. Oh my goodness. Let's see if I can get him to come back. He's probably sitting right there. Oh my goodness. Here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. Probably a striper in the water. But... Oh, get down. I got him. That's, that's a good one. That's a good fish, folks. Oh, it's a largemouth. <laughs> that's what we're here for right there, son. Look at that fish. Oh, that's a big old largemouth. Uh-oh, don't let him get in the bushes on me. All right, I got him pulled away. Got him pulled away. Use him a rod, use him a rod, use him a rod. Use that drag. Yeah, you don't want him getting in the bushes. So you kind of pull him out, kind of muscle him out a little bit, then let him fight. Look at that, look at my swim bait sitting there. <laughs> Those are the kind of fish we're looking for, son. <laughs> All right, I don't want him snapping my, I don't, I'm not quite sure if I got to frame my line after coming through some of those trees. I'm kind of babying him a little bit, but it's okay, we want to get him to the boat. Look at that fish, that's a good one. 
Oh, Lake Pleasant Bass. Oh, I got him hooked right in the jaw and it's crooked, so that tells me it's not in very good. Come on, oh, I got him good, I got him good. Oh yeah, did you see that fish? <laughs> That's what I'm talking about, son. That is what I'm talking about right there. Those are the kind of fish you'll catch on that swim bait and bigger. I mean, they just really go after it. Oh my goodness, see you buddy. That is a blast to catch fish like that. I promise you, you're gonna have a lot of fun throwing this bait around, we're covering water. He blasted right on the point. So we'll know these bushes that are coming out, these lone bushes on these points, we gotta make sure we fish it out a little bit because those fish are there. You know, one thing that's really important is knowing how to retrieve this bait. Because the way these baits are designed, you can't hold your rod tip up. If you hold your rod tip up, the bait will actually come out of the water. When you throw out there, if I wanted to reel it real fast and keep my rod tip up, it's really hard. But if you bring your rod tip down, right here towards the water, and, and, and start reeling it in, it keeps it just right under subsurface there. And that's when they come up and blast it and they hit it like top water. It's so much fun. So what you do is throw it out there, bring your rod tip down, and start retrieving. And you can see how fast I'm retrieving this. You can slow it down if you want, or you can bring it fast. Sometimes when they're real active, you can, you can create that wake, that V, and then there's other times you just slow it down. There's one, there's one. Oh yeah, there you go, folks. <laughs> Come on, son. He ain't as big as that last one I caught, but he is a fish. Got out in this wind a little bit. Look at that. All right, all right, all right. Come on, son. Come on, gotcha. <laughs> I switched to the bigger swim bait. Caught a smaller fish. <laughs> it's amazing how that works, isn't it? No, what I've done is I've come out to kind of more out towards the main lake. You know, these if, if these fish have spawned, I saw a lot of older fry and back in the backs of the cut. So my option was, is I wanted to come out here. What happens, these females will actually move out of those shallows after spawning and they'll sit out on these deeper ledges. And so that's what I decided to do was just come out here a little bit onto these deeper ledges on, the, on more of the main lake areas, little clearer water. And I went to the bigger swim bait, get a good cast on it. And uh, this is the, the regular dipper is what it's called. And uh, I'll tell you what, you'll catch fish off this too, but I'm slow rolling this one. Sometimes you can burn the bait and catch a lot of fish if they're chasing. There's other times you can just slow roll this bait in and catch them. Just kind of work it like a spinner bait. These fish start transitioning, and what ends up happening a lot of times, you gotta, you gotta make the movement with them. I didn't see any action going on in the back except for a little bit of striper and this and that, very little. So what we'll do, now that we caught that one fish, you start working some of the steeper stuff around the corner here, see if we can get bit. Work some of the main lake spots. Now here's what happens. These fish will spawn in the back and then they'll come out, you know, the, the main lake will spawn, always spawn last, it seems like. And the, the backs of the cuts, the coves, will spawn first. So it's shallower back there. The water's a little warmer back there. We'll get out here where it's a little bit cooler and see if these fish are gonna be willing to bite. I'm throwing this on 17 pound test line, believe it or not. You can get by with 14 or 12 if you want, but boy, I'll tell you, the uh, 17, just like a spinner bait, you're reeling it. I really don't think they see it all that well. It's a reaction, more, more of a reaction bait, but I get a good cast on this thing. Oh, there's a good one. There's a good one. Oh yeah, <laughs> come right out the water now, son. Come on. Oh, he doesn't want to come up. <laughs> he's running out for deep water is what he's doing. Here he comes. I can see my leader. All right, buddy. <laughs> he clobbered that bait. All right, come on. That was fun. Boy, you'll catch a lot of these. I'll, I'll tell you something, a lot of times, when you're throwing these baits, especially when the you, you have what I call the fry garters around these trees, that's what you're catching, the little buck bass. 
nice fish, but they're so much fun. And then a lot of times what you do is you get out here on the steeper stuff and start working your way out a lot of times, the bigger fish will be out in that area. The bigger fish will move out, the littler fish will stay in. Oh, I've got that one. There, I got that one. <laughs> Not a giant, but a fun fish. Oh, come on. <laughs> Boy, look at how clear that water is, folks. Oh my goodness. Come on, son. All right, come on. I'll tell you what, he took the hook all the way in. Look how far that hook is in there. That tells you they're, they're, they're eating it. When they get it, they want it. I just had a bite and then threw back in there a little farther in and managed to catch this fish. There we go. Look at that. Nice little pleasant bass. Let's talk a little bit about the equipment we're throwing today, folks, on this little dipper. These little swim baits are a lot of fun to throw, but let me explain something to you. If you do not get the right gear, you're gonna be in trouble. You won't be able to fish it as effectively. Not nearly as fun either. First of all, <clears throat> one of my all-time favorite lines, that Seaguar Smackdown line, is what I'm throwing. It's a 20-pound test uh, braid line, okay? I'm using my Johnny Johnson Signature Series 710 Taipan rod, okay? It's made specifically for what we're doing right here. I, we, we designed it, it's a 710, so you get that long cast. You gotta have the long cast, you know? Uh, I'm throwing it on a 10 pound uh, fluorocarbon leader. Here's the ticket. That's the heavy wire hook that I'm using. You can use a two aught or a three aught heavy wire wide gap hook. The reason for the heavy wire is so when you throw the bait out there and you start reeling it in, it actually helps sink the bait a little bit. Otherwise it comes up to the surface too much, okay? So that little bit of heavier wire really helps. I, call, I think it's called a super line. Super line made by Gamakatsu. And uh, there's that little swim bait right there. Fun little swim bait to throw. And you know, all that is a little dipper. Now, I can tell you this much. If I was fishing this thing really slow, I'd probably get away from this and throw my Arizona custom baits. It's called the ringtail uh, swim bait. And oh man, they love that too. We'll be showing that. But yeah, th this bait right here is a lot of fun to throw. Now the whole purpose of having that long rod is to make a long cast. You're in clear water. So the longer, longer the cast you get, the better off you are. What helps you with that long cast? This braid line. Now that fluorocarbon leader, it's not very long at all. When we tie this, you're not reeling the knot up into the, into the reel. What you're doing is you're taking that fluorocarbon leader. You can see how long it is. When I go to make my cast, okay, when I actually go to make my cast, here's my fluorocarbon leader right here, right between these two eyelets. Somewhere in this neighborhood is really good, okay? I don't like reeling the knot up into the, into the reel at all, okay? And uh, you'll, you'll catch a lot of fish that way. The Alberto knot's what I throw or what I use on the marrying the lines. It's called the Alberto knot. It's a great knot. It's small in diameter and it gets through these guides good. Hey folks, for my tip of the week, you know, throwing these weightless is what I've been doing pretty much most of the day, but there's a few little tricks that you can do to your bait, or at least one little trick that I do to my bait. If I wanna reel it really fast, don't want it coming out of the water, or if I want to reel it a little bit slower and get it a little bit deeper. And that is, I, I don't like to use a weight that's on the hook. I think it kills the action of the bait. So a lot of times what I'll do is I'll get a little nail weight. That's a tungsten nail weight right there. Okay, a little 32nd ounce. I'll put it right there underneath the chin of this bait. Put it right there and stab it almost straight up. Just like that, go right in there, right before the hook comes in. Now that, that little weight in there will not only allow you to cast a lot farther, but if you're slow rolling, it'll allow it to go a little bit deeper 
or if you're trying to speed that thing across the water and make a real nice V and you want it to go pretty fast and cover a lot of water, it allows the nose of the bait to stay down underneath the water and you'll catch a lot of fish doing that. Now what I'll do is just go ahead after I've put my weight in, is hook my hook up and you, you can see right here, I'll just put it in there and I always pull, put the head of the bait right to the bend of the hook, okay? Then I'm gonna pull it out on the bottom. Once you do that, pull it all the way up to the eye of the hook, just like so, that little keeper that holds the bait up there, okay? My little weight, you can see it in this clear bait. It's up in there, okay? Then I just kind of pinch it over. Now the thing with this bait is you want to make sure the hook comes out of the bait. See how I got the hook out of the bait? I do what they call skidding the bait. So I'll pull the, pull the bait up to the top of the hook like that and I'll just take a little pinch of that skin of that hook of that bait and bring it over to the tip of the hook makes it weedless. So you can throw it all up in these trees that we're throwing them into and, and catch fish coming out of these trees. That's my tip of the week. You're gonna catch a lot of fish doing that and it's gonna help you a lot. Oh, got him. Got that one. I saw him come out and grab that ringtail swim bait. <laughs> Get back there where you want to move it a little bit slower into those trees. I'll go to that, that ringtail and catch them. I'm kind of going back and forth right now with a lot, but there's that Arizona Custom Baits ringtail swim bait. And man, it works. Ah, oh, it's got a beautiful color to it. Just a great action, displaces a little bit more water, has a lot more wobble action on the tail. So instead of it being all tight, it'll just kind of it's, it's, a, it's a good bait, really a good bait. Oh, there he is. Oh, and that's a good one. Oh, yeah, that's a good fish right there. Oh, and there's another one with him. Oh, another big big fish with him. Oh my goodness, a school. Oh. Come on, buddy. There was another fish with him. Come on. Get over here where I can feel you. Oh yeah. Yeah. Folks, what a day. Oh, I got him right in the tongue. What a day we have had on Lake Pleasant. Beautiful Lake Pleasant bass right here. Love this lake in the spring. I didn't get out as early as I wanted to. Uh, the bed fish is pretty much over, but that's fine. Find other ways of catching them and you can have a lot of fun. That one was on the big, the big swim bait. I'll tell you what, grab yourself some swim baits, get out here, have some fun. And I'll tell you what, between the, the big dipper, the little dipper, You'll, you'll have a lot of fun. And that ring tail, I promise you, that ring tail swim bait from Arizona Custom Baits is another great bait that you'll catch some fish on. And get out there and give it a shot. Thanks for joining us on the show. We'll see you next week. I'm Johnny Johnson. <laughs> now, see, that's what I'm talking about, folks. <laughs>